Hi guys, coming at you with another video. I'm so glad you're here with me. I decided to do this video on this old sketchbook because I feel like it didn't get the limelight it deserved. I initially just created like quick time lapse reel on Instagram and I also threw it on TikTok, but I just think that social media doesn't give a lot of work that us artists do a lot of credit so I decided I think it's time we revisit and we just do a walkthrough this is my first ever sketchbook walkthrough and I don't know what to expect but let's give it a go so this journal art journal is a moleskin art journal and it's A4 size um, as you can see, I started it back in May 2020. Let's get started. So, straight off the bat, when I started this sketchbook, I, I had this really bad perfectionism um, stage happening. I was really hard on myself. I didn't want not one page to, I just didn't want it to be imperfect. I, it had to, each entry had to have something going for it. It had to be worthy. And, you know, fast forward two years now, I've let myself go from that sort of stage. And I work very differently in my sketchbooks. And I am about to finish one soon. I'm currently working on it. And you will see the difference if you happen to watch that one too, when I do show it. But my first page here, this one with all the heads, I was just really into um, painting heads and working with wild colors. Um, and also I was, I was participating in the um, 100 day project. So my first time working on the project and participating and my um, belief going into the project was wanting to work with gouache um, and just uh, do lots of um, bright, bold patterns and colours. So I think I achieved that <laughs> straight off the bat. Um, but yeah, I was, I remember very hard on myself about just trying to make everything perfect, but I did have lots of fun working with all these cool faces and I wanted to try and get away from uh, working the same face that I always do. Um, I wanted to try and bring a little bit more ethnicity and a little bit more culture in all the different wonderful um, people from around the world and try and capture them. Um, and I think I kind of did achieve that a little bit. So yeah. Um, moving on to this page, I I really was just trying to um, capture the body and the figure forms of people in, not just in motion, but just not in the regular sort of poses that I would just create from my mind. So I remember just scouring Pinterest to just try and find some different poses and I found a lot of athletic ones and I just kind of went with that. Okay, this one was lots of fun to create. I remember, I mean, this is kind of like if I was to go like freestyle flowers and florals, this is kind of like my go-to. Very messy, very colorful and also just a little bit of line work. And um, lots of little flex and movement. And when I did th do this, I remember I actually did the vase at the end. And I remember thinking to myself, it looks like a pineapple. <laughs> and then I named it Floral Pineapple. And I put it up on my print-on-demand stores um, for a bit, which I've since taken down um, because I now run off my own website. I don't currently have it for sale, but yeah. I remember I put that one up. Um, over here, yeah, I've been painting sun since I can remember. <laughs> since I was a little girl 
you know, the iconic sun in the corner style. <laughs> um, yeah, they're a staple in my art. I always do them. These ones were directly um, influenced from this one because I had a lot of this opera pink left on my paint palette and the suns were the sort of first things to get laid down. Um, and then I decided to mix up that mint green background. So I found that I did that a lot on the project. If I laid down too much paint in the palette, um, it kind of influenced what colors I was going into for the next painting, which in a way kind of helped the flow. Okay, um, yeah, I know this. This one I did, um, I originally painted a um, really baby pink Heinz bottle and I mixed it with this really cool like lime green background and it went absolutely crazy on Instagram and I uh, wanted to do an ode to other condiments <laughs> so you know the sriracha the one with the hen on the front that everyone knows um, and I kind of just mimic that style again again I'm going in with some more heads and I'm trying to be a little bit more diverse um, you know, some cornrows, some really pale colours, some deeper skin tones. I'm just trying to be mindful about diversity in my art. Yeah, the Sydney map. Um, it's only a very small portion of Sydney. If you know Sydney, this is just sort of like the, the city, Darling Harbour and along the wharf and a couple of like um, buildings that are prominent in Sydney. Um, I don't remember why I wanted to do a map. That's right. I originally had created a map on the area I was living in, San Susi, um, in Sydney's southern suburbs. And um, I kind of wanted to try my hand at a map again. And this one actually did put on my print on demand site and um, I actually sold quite a few of these because I mean Sydney <laughs> so it obviously has a, a draw card there for a lot of people um, over here I love painting cats um, I always include them in my work somewhere um, <coughs> mostly I used to always just commonly paint the just the regular house cat I wanted to try and include some of the wilder feline family members like the leopard and the lion and stuff and I really love how like that cheetah background turned out that's really fun apologies guys I'm actually just getting over a little something like a bit of laryngitis so it's really tripping me up <laughs> I'll try and get through this okay um this page I remember I wanted to try and explore scenes like like whole scenes not just focus on like a single mode of sitting and floating in the middle of the page like I used to do all the time and again I wanted there to be lots of like pattern line work and intricate things happening um, and I I did this little snippet here um, and I really loved how it turned out. Um, I remember I was really stepping outside the box with my usual stuff going into this and um, yeah I was really pleased with how it turned out. Um, over here I wanted to again try and just get some people practice happening because I find people really hard to do. Um, I know I've got a particular style in the way I do my people um, and I've learned that about myself now but um, yeah just even doing this was hard because I mean I think the hardest part was I would just go in freehand and do all of this none of this was pre-sketched I should mention that so um, I actually even have a time lapse of this on my Instagram where you do I see I go straight into a blank page and um, yeah there's a lot of pressure <laughs> doing that to yourself so 
I don't know why I did that to myself. Um, I know at the time my daughter was two and I had a lot of, um, I didn't have a lot of free time. (laughs) So yeah, I would just like hit the paint straight away (laughs) to try and cut out one of the steps. Um, yeah, I remember with this one, I wanted a scene by a window with like lots of stars and celestial things happening. Um, and yeah, and I remember distinctly (laughs) stopping myself and not painting a cat and trying to paint a dog because, um, I'm not a very natural dog person. I never grew up with a dog and I feel like I kind of did miss out in that sense because I know people are absolutely besotted with their dogs. I never, I kind of, I miss that boat, I think. Um, not being allowed to have animal, like, like four legged kind of animals growing up. So I want to try and give a little bit of love towards the dogs cause I was always so cat heavy in my art. And again, lots of bright, vibrant colors and patterns. And yeah, I really like how it turned out. Over here, again, another ode to dogs. Um, This time, sausage dogs. (laughs) Because where I was living at the time, my neighbors had a sausage dog and his name's Frankie. And he is the most loudest, most annoying little dog. (laughs) Um, Cute, but loud and annoying. (laughs) Just always barking for no reason. So um, I wanted to just try and capture him there. Uh, Talking about giving love to dogs. Now it's time for cats. Um, (laughs) This little fella is Nico. And Nico is my, he's my cat. Um, I don't have him living with me anymore, unfortunately, because at the time, that I owned him I was living with my parents and I found him he was um he was a poor little kid on the street with a broken paw and he was very hungry and he was on his last legs basically anyway long story short I saved him and um yeah he's my baby boy he's my first boy and um I love him to pieces but when I did move out I moved to a place that had um that He's on a very busy road and because he's an outdoor cat so during the day we let him out and he goes into the garden and stuff and he does wander a little bit but where my parents live it's a quieter street um, so he can't get into too much trouble there and um, I didn't have it in me to bring him with me and just locking him up 24 hours not being allowed out at all um, I thought it was a bit cruel to do that so Um, and my mum was happy to keep him she's absolutely obsessed with him (laughs) they've got their own little love affair happening Um, yeah but I miss him I miss having a cat I miss their presence and their just their quiet um, companionship it's very if you've had a cat you know what I'm talking about (laughs) Um, yeah but I love how he turned out Um, I love his wallpaper background very bright my usual type of flowers, lots of strokes. Yeah. Okay. Um, on this page, I started off. I'm starting over here first because when I had this page, these two pages blank, I actually started over here first. I was doing a live and talking to people as I painted things. And then after I did that, I just went straight onto this side and I just, again, it was freestyle. Nothing was pre planned. I just knew I wanted lots of colors, a person, always a woman. I usually, I love painting women. I usually love doing their hair, hair like clouds. Um, it's usually larger than life kind of hair. And yeah, the color palette wasn't really, it wasn't really thought through, but for somehow um, in my mind, I like it, it works. And um, yeah, I like it, so. Uh, the next one, so this little section here um, prompted me for the next one. I really liked those colours, how they're set together. 
And so I tried to work with it and do that. Um, didn't work out as well as I would have imagined, I think because I went too heavy in the white on top of that sort of like green, but <clears throat> it's a nice spread. Um, over here, yep, I was just um, going down like this magic sort of like gypsy witch crystal magic healing thing <laughs> and um, I had to get on my system so that's what I did again carry that on with that I was trying to practice some hands and again this is all freestyle at the time I thought I absolutely destroyed this page but um, if you're going to practice you should just be practicing with a sketch first because that's where you will really learn not just going in freestyle. Um, this one, so again, it was from the 100 Day Project and by this stage, I was actually getting really burnt out. Um, producing a painting every single day um, was really starting to get me really, really tired. And being a mum of a two-year-old, first time mum as well, like my, you know, I never had children prior to this little girl and it was, um, <laughs> energy levels were waning, put it that way. And so what I would do was to hold myself accountable, I would force myself to go on Instagram live to start the painting because, yeah, it kept me on track. So I remember doing that as a live. I don't know if it's still up. I think I played music that they said was later um, copyrighted. So they took it down. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But yeah. Um, love the colors and I love this chick here. I don't know what it is, but yeah This one is <laughs> I guess an illustrative version of my husband um, we went to a wedding and My husband is quite the great dancer. Uh, he did great dancing from from being a child all the way up to a young adult he even danced at the Olympic Games in Sydney and um, yeah it's in him it's in his blood it's in his soul and um, at the wedding he he put on quite a show and I captured it on video and I wanted to kind of just mark it down on paper so that's what I did um, so around this time 2020 if you remember um, you, there was a huge movement happening Black Lives Matter so I started to put a little bit of that into my work it felt right at the time and I wanted to kind of just commemorate and celebrate the occasion um, over here I think it was very plain it was just figures no faces no markings or patterns and um, yeah looking at it now it's not my favorite I do love that pink though that's one of my favorite pinks, opera pink. Um, so this one was a drawing challenge. And at the time I thought it was actually a pretty clever idea because trying to pump out a painting a day, sometimes you get really like in your head about what you're going to actually paint. <laughs> and so for me, I would sometimes lend like lean on a drawing challenge to help get me through what I'm actually going to paint for the day and um I can't remember who the I think it's Sonia Illustration um she usually does like whimsical uh female figures and animals in a really cute um style and we had to kind of just uh, paint our version and this was mine um yeah, it was really nice to just be able to just have someone tell you what to do um, in a way. Like, not copy. I'm not saying copy, but uh, what I'm trying to get at is, at least with drawing challenges, you kind of, um, they kind of lay down the groundwork in what you're going to actually do. So it was just nice having that that taken off the shoulders for a day <laughs> so yeah um this one i painted as a live again because again i was 
really getting tired <laughs> and uh, I needed to keep myself accountable and the lives helped with that. It took ages to do because I just did lots of like little tiny line work and I don't usually go that fine but for some reason I had more time on my hands or I wanted to make it a little bit more intricate with lots of lines so and I don't know why I painted her green but it for me it worked. <laughs> Okay, so I know why I did this one. Um, if you have ever watched Scarface, it's a 70s, um, I think it's 70s, based in the 70s, but it's a movie with Al Pacino. It's one of his most infamous roles as an actor. Um, he basically plays Tony Montana, um, and he's basically this criminal drug lord. Um, <laughs> and one of the lines from the movie is, don't get high on your own supply, which is everyone's number one rule when dealing with drugs. <laughs> and it all comes from this movie. And uh, I just thought, wouldn't it be cool, like, don't get high on your own supply, like as in your own art supplies? <laughs> I don't know. I found it funny. <laughs> um, what do you think? Is that funny or am I just being a total geek? Uh, anyway, let me know. Um, over here... Um, yeah, I wanted to go in with faces and I started off with just, you know, regular people faces. And then for some reason, I just started to go into animals and then back to people. And then I thought, wouldn't it be cool if they had cats like sitting around them, like maybe creating hair for them, showing their buttholes, playing, trying to cut another cat's tail. Yeah, that was a real fun page. I liked that. Um, yeah, so here I started off with this segment up here. I did like a little portion of someone's hallway table and mirror from Pinterest. And, um, really like how that turned out actually. Um, I was starting to like cut down my painting sizes into smaller portions. Like this was another day for the 100 day project. And so was this one, um, just to make it a little bit more um achievable <laughs> so um I really like how these turned out again I was going in with like a really fine paintbrush probably the finest paintbrush I ever owned and I was probably just giving it a good well and over here I was trying to explore composition in florals um and also I was starting to um, try and get away from like just creating floral like perfectly like naively open and perfect so uh, in the background here I've got like a side pose um, and over here I've got like closed buds um, I was just really trying not to make it look so perfect if that makes sense um, uh, so over here uh, this was a, another thing off Pinterest, like another, a room that I was trying to capture. I loved the sort of Persian style carpet um, and I thought, yep, that's got to be it. So I really went heavy with the details down below and like kept the the couch and the background wall um, plain. And I really liked how that worked out. Um, over here, I, I just, I... I like to do a lot of floral ladies, so like flowers for hair, like just no hair, just all flowers. And um, I just went in with this profile of this woman and just started scattering flowers all around her. And then later on, I went in and added some details. And I really like how that turned out. I really like the coral and the um, turquoise color together. It's really, really special, I think. Yeah. Um, so here I freehand like freestyle painted this I remember freaking out thinking oh, I'm gonna get something wrong like a limb an angle wrong um, but it worked out perfectly in my mind and I actually do like how that worked out turned out well like for someone that just went in with a paintbrush okay so I've drawn tigers heaps of times before again I'm very um, <laughs> partial to the feline family 
and uh, that includes even the larger, more wild felines. And um, in another sketchbook, I painted a beautiful tiger, and it was received very warmly from my audience on Instagram. So um, I decided to do some do some more tigers, and I love how that turned out. Over here, I obviously started, and I didn't like something, so I stopped. Again, didn't like that the legs were coming down too much. And I love this little guy down here. I've actually replicated him a few times over the years. So, yeah, I was starting to get obsessed with drawing, painting bears. Um, so I was just trying to practice um, bears in different poses. Um, sitting, standing, dancing. And then over here I tried to do acrobatic. Um, probably not one of my favourite pages, these two in the book again trying with acrobat um, and giving up I didn't finish them um, another floral composition trying to paint flowers different angles ones that are open ones that are closed buds and leaves and stems and I, I really love these broad leaves that sort of like lime green with that green very nice I liked discovering those two colors together um, I'm sort of nearing the end of the project now from my memory and um, I was getting so tired <laughs> so I think I just when you see me do flowers you know I'm just being lazy <laughs> put it that way so yeah it was just a branch flowers leaves lots of specks yeah, nothing too fancy. Um, I don't know how this one started. Um, I think I'm. I always usually start with the figure, and um, and then I just went really crazy with the pattern. I actually really like how this one turned out. It's still one of my favorites, and I love the um, the sun in this one. I love her. I love her half closed eyes and her nose. Yeah. Um, so at this stage, I remember I was enrolled in Victoria Johnson's Create Florals course. Um, and the brief was, um, one week was folk art florals and the other week was tropical florals. So this is me just sort of mucking around in the book, getting some painting on. Yeah, just mucking around trying to get, oh, this one was another brief for Victoria Johnson I can't remember what the term is um, but yeah it was using a lot of indigo I remember that yeah just mucking around again um, this was my very first YouTube video this was before I even sort of even had the desire to even um, create a YouTube like channel like or try and make a channel for myself I just uploaded it on um, on YouTube just for fun. I didn't even create a thumbnail picture for it. It was it's just uh, I think I do remember at the time because I use my art a lot as my therapy, and I remember I think I was feeling a bit down at the time, and I think this is just a reminder to myself to just have beautiful thoughts and um, just try and hang in there. <laughs> so. That's what I remember about that one. Um, this is just another flower comp composition. I was trying to just play with some really broad leaves again. Um, I think it could have worked better limiting the palette, but sometimes I just go crazy and I can't help myself. And I just want to use every color I have. <laughs> Okay, so this one I created, I think at the time I started a patron account. I don't know why I thought people would be interested in my art. <laughs> um, I thought there were people that would be, I thought there would be people out there that would be um, wanting to um, support me uh, in my art enough to become a patron. And I started an account and I was just creating content and doing videos and talks and stuff and 
yeah, I, I remember this was part of the Patreon stage that I was running. Um, FYI, I'm not on Patreon. I did not do good at all. I had no one back me. <laughs> so um, full transparency, like I'm, I'm not on there and I'm not a success. <laughs> so yeah, but I, I did have a lot of fun um, creating this. It's a little bit, it doesn't really make sense in terms of like, what the women are wearing like I mean she looks like she belongs in Aspen she looks like she's got the sleeves of Snow White um she looks like she's like Arabian Nights um and the 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 stars and the lanterns and the work the pattern work reminds me of like Tuscany so yeah don't ask I don't I don't really know what what why I did that but at the time I was immensely proud of it I think because I found I, I still find people very challenging, um, and I don't know if it's just in my head or if people actually do like my style of um, people or if it just looks really naive and like really childlike. You know when you can't step outside of your head enough to to tell the difference. <laughs> That's me right now. So yeah, but. Look, I don't care. I had fun doing it and it was an experience and you learn. You learn, you live. Learn and live. So, yeah, next one. Yep, again, um, just trying to get my people practice on and um, forcing myself because I don't find painting, or drawing, sketching people um, and natural. So, and I didn't want to do the same, like same styled body every time so I was trying to like you know get some thick girls happening you know get a girl with some legs get a girl with a bit of a tummy um yeah I really like this page I distinctly remember painting this um because at the time uh, the weather in Sydney was beautiful and more and more people were flocking to the beach including myself and yeah, I just wanted to just kind of like capture a bit of a beach scene and um, just get down some people that I had like taken a little snapshot of in my head. Like this lady sitting on a bench waiting for her family to bring her her drink of water and just little things that I picked up along the way. There were people playing volleyball. Yeah. Um, so this one, I, I think I was, I started this person walking with an umbrella like trying to do like a London scene did I finish it no I got bored real quick <laughs> and that is uh one of uh one of the things about being being an artist is having the discipline and um some of the time over the years has been eyes closed no problem um and other times it's just been really hard so yeah I gave, I threw the towel in, didn't continue. But over here, um, where we're hitting, I remember October of 2020. And having participated in Inktober previous years, I wanted to follow, I think her name is Shian Louise, a remarkable and beautiful artist. She creates the most beautiful florals you have ever seen. And um, she had prompts for October um, that were all flowers. So this one was poppies and I wanted to go on with ink. And I did that and I didn't do all the days. I just did some. Uh, this was another entry. And I wrote the words Iris because our family cat is Iris from my mum and dad's. Um, I just wanted to get her name down on paper. So another one, couple more, and yeah, I really like the composition of that one. It's very pretty. Um, I don't know why I did this one, but I really liked. I just really like things of the occult, so Halloween, um, ghosts, candles, dark, moody. Um, that kind of stuff so yeah I actually got a time lapse of that on my Instagram um, this one I started to try and do lace um, but I never actually went in and finished it so th 
this isn't really a finished sketchbook when you think about it. <laughs> it's got a few um, unfinished works, which I've just deemed as finished. <laughs> you never know. I might come back and revisit. I have done it before. I've left something alone for two years and then gone back to it. So another unfinished one. I think I was going through a funny stage here. I know why. <laughs> I had finished the 100 day project and I was absolutely lost <laughs> and I was going through this weird stage. I didn't know what was going on. Um, yeah, so me just trying to pick up gouache again because I had been so intimate with it for so long and um, and then all of a sudden I stopped. So it felt weird and I tried to start up again and again unfinished. This one is a, a beautiful uh, bouquet of flowers that my... Um, my, my, my dear friends gifted me for my birthday. Absolutely love them. I thought, yep, they will live forever on in my page or of my sketchbook. Two-pack. Um, at the time, a friend was opening up a business and was looking at getting a, a, a mural done and uh, suggested something about a two-pack in there somewhere. So I was just getting some practice on, but... Um, that mural ended up changing completely to something different. Um, yeah, so I was just trying to just paint clothes. I think I like the clothes, but I really don't like the colour of the background. I think it's um, very clashy. A lot of my work is like that, though. But I still, I remember when I did it, oh, the colour was a bit too gaudy. And uh, for me to remember that, yeah. It must be true. <laughs> um, something that didn't finish. Uh, so here I'm just trying to paint um, just vintage Christmas ornaments. Um, I love how they turned out, but every time I turn to this page, I think that more work can be done. You know what it is? I think white needs to be added because I used to always just go in with white afterwards just to add a little bit of... Um, just reflection. Yeah, I think that's why this page bothers me. Yeah, so this one is a obviously very Greek. My background is, my heritage is Greek um, and Cypriot. And um, yeah, you'll often find a bit of Greek um, influence in my work somewhere, whether it's the actual subject or if it's like a little, little bit of a Pegasus somewhere. But this one in particular, it was about um, in ancient times, they believed that people were born with two, two heads, two bodies, sorry, two heads, two legs, two arms, and um, Zeus split them in half because they were very powerful beings. And they were destined forever to roam the earth to find the other halves and there was just something in that sentiment that really just touched me at the time so I um I wanted to just sort of record it um so yeah this page was just me just revisiting florals um trying to get a little bit loose and relaxed and um I really love how that turned out I love these colors together um, I love the layout. I love all the different things that are going on. I think it works. Again, vintage baubles and or uh, ornaments, but see how I've gone in more intricate. I think that's why I don't like the other page of ornaments. This one sings to me. I like. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so obviously it's Christmas time for you to be seeing ornaments and, you know, angels and stuff. Um, and I was doing a lot of work heavily with um, my iPad. So I wanted to try and just get back to regular painting media because painting's fun. You take it for granted when you don't do it after a while. So it's always good to just sort of revisit some old mediums. And um, yeah, I love this green from Windsor & Newton stunning and um, I started off with this angel and then just kind of spread out and I really like how it worked out yeah very Christmas themed um, I had lots of fun doing it 
I ended up making a rule on my Instagram for it. And I love that gold paint. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's just really nice and reflective. And that's it. That's the last one. So thank you for taking a trip down memory lane circa 2020 with me via my sketchbook. Um, I will be doing this more again. And thank you very much.